We're now in chapter 12 about relative sizes of measurement units. This is lesson 12.1 about measurement benchmarks. And you might want to take notes. There's a lot of information. In video 6.6, .6, we learned that a benchmark is a known size or amount that helps us understand a different size or amount. And we can use benchmarks to compare and relate measurement units. When we know the size of one object, we can use it as a benchmark to find the sizes of other objects. When the pumpkin was about the size of a basketball, you can imagine how big a basketball is, then you can imagine how big the pumpkin is. If we know a baseball bat is one yard long, we can tell the length of a car is about five baseball bats long, or five yards long. Benchmarks are not used to give exact measurements. We use benchmarks to compare sizes as an estimate. And if it's taking too much time for us to measure with a benchmark that we chose, then we should have chosen a larger benchmark. The one we chose was too small. A student said the length of their shoe is about the length of one baseball bat. Does the student's statement make sense and seem reasonable? Well, think, a baseball bat is about one yard long, and since a shoe is shorter than that length of one baseball bat, their shoe is shorter than one yard. So no, the statement is not reasonable. A student said the length of his bicycle is about the length of five baseball bats. And we can use these benchmark units to determine if the student's statement is reasonable. So let's take a closer look. A small paper clip is about an inch long. A football is about one foot long. A baseball bat is a yard long. And one mile can be walked in about 20 minutes. So those are customary units of length. We can use those objects as benchmarks. He said the length of his bicycle is about the length of five baseball bats. And we think a baseball bat is about one yard long. And since the student's bicycle is shorter than five times the length of a baseball bat, their bicycle's shorter than five yards long. So no, the statement is not reasonable. A mile is a U.S. customary unit for measuring length or distance. A person can walk about one mile in 20 minutes. We can use the distance we would walk in about 20 minutes as a benchmark for one mile. One mile is actually equal to 5,280 feet. It's equal to 1,760 yards. And since a baseball bat is about a yard, it's equal to about 1,760 baseball bats. We can use containers as benchmarks for U.S. customary units of liquid volume. We have one cup, a pint, a quart, one half gallon, and one gallon. So about how much liquid is in a mug of tea? Do you think it would be one cup or one gallon? If you said one cup, you're right. One gallon would be a lot of tea, and it wouldn't fit in a mug. We can use objects as benchmarks for U.S. customary units of weight. Here we have a house key. That's about an ounce. And a baby kitten, a little new kitten, is about a pound. A giraffe is about a ton. A strawberry is about an ounce and a pineapple is about a pound, and a car is about a ton. So about how much does a box of cereal weigh? Do you think it weighs about an ounce, a pound, or a ton? If you said one pound, you're right. About how much does an adult polar bear weigh? Do you think it weighs about as much as a strawberry, or a pineapple, or about a car? If you said one ton, you're right. Polar bears are very heavy. A strawberry weighs less than a pineapple, so one ounce is less than one pound. And a pineapple weighs less than a car, 
So one pound is less than one ton. We can use benchmarks for metric units of measure. Like place value, the metric system is based on multiples of 10. Each unit is 10 times as large as the next smaller unit. So let's take a closer look at this chart. The tip of a pencil is about one millimeter and the width of a finger is about one centimeter. And the width of an open hand from the tip of the thumb to the other side of the palm is about one decimeter. And the width of a door is about one meter and we can walk one kilometer in about 10 minutes. So if a pencil tip is one millimeter, then 10 pencil tips are about the width of one finger. And since that's one centimeter, 10 finger widths are about the width from a thumb to the side of a palm of an open hand. And 10 open hands are about the width of the front door of a house. But 1,000 front door widths are about the length we could walk in 10 minutes. A kilometer is a metric unit of length for measuring distance. So there's other metric units between a meter and a kilometer. We'll get into those later on in the chapter. Is the length of the kitchen in your home greater than or less than one kilometer? So remember, a kilometer is about how far you can walk in 10 minutes. If you said less than, you're right. Your kitchen would have to be awfully huge for you to walk 10 minutes before you could get to the other side. Is the distance from the North Pole to the South Pole greater than or less than one kilometer? If you said greater, you're right. It's actually about 20,000 kilometers from the North Pole to the South Pole. We have metric units of liquid volume. We have a milliliter and a liter. A milliliter is about an eyedropper. It's not very much fluid. And a liter, well, that's about four cups of fluid comparing it to U.S. customary. So about how much liquid is in one can of soda? Do you think it would be 350 milliliters or 350 liters? So four cups is one liter. Would it be four times 350 cups? Well, if you said milliliters, you're right. 350 liters would be an awful lot of soda. About how much water can a kitchen sink hold? Do you think it's 20 milliliters, 20 of these eyedroppers, or do you think it's 20 liters? It would be about 20 liters because one cup is about 240 milliliters. It would be 20 liters. We have metric units of mass. We have a gram, that's about the weight of a dollar bill, and a kilogram, that's about the weight of a baseball bat. So about how much mass does one crayon have? Do you think it would have 30 grams or 30 kilograms? If you said 30 grams, you're right. We're just talking about one little crayon. About how much mass does my dog Lola have? Do you think she weighs about $8 bills, about eight grams? Or do you think she weighs about the same as eight baseball bats, eight kilograms? If you said eight kilograms, you're right. She actually weighs about 18 pounds in US customary measure. That's about eight kilograms. So we have customary units of measure and metric units of measure. And for the customary units of length, we have inch, foot, yard, and mile. For liquid volume, we have cup, pint, quart, half gallon, and gallon. 
For weight, we have ounce, pound, and ton. For metric units, in length, we have millimeter, centimeter, decimeter, meter, kilometer. For liquid volume, we have milliliter and liter, and there are actually others we'll learn about in the rest of the chapter. And for mass, we have gram and kilogram. Now, did you notice for customary units, it shows length and liquid volume, and for metric units, it shows length and liquid volume? But for customary units, it shows weight, and for metric units, it says mass. Well, what's the difference between weight and mass? So let me try to explain this without getting too overly scientific. There are currently 195 countries in the world. And they all use the metric system, but three countries also use U.S. customary measures, the United States, Liberia, and Myanmar. And metric is used for science and technology in those countries. So what's the difference between weight and mass? Weight is the measure of the pull of gravity on an object. Mass measures the amount of substance, the matter, in an object. This means our weight on Earth is different than our weight on the moon because they have different forces of gravity pulling on us. But our mass, the amount of substance, that matter in our body, is the same on Earth as it is on the moon. Our mass doesn't change, but our weight might. So as long as we're planning on only measuring objects on Earth, we can use weight and mass in exchange for each other. As soon as we are measuring something out in space, well, then weight and mass are two different things. Have you ever heard of a smoot? A smoot is a funny unit of length that was created in 1958 by students of MIT. That's the Massachusetts Institute of Technology. It was named for a student, Oliver R. Smoot, whose height of 5 feet 7 inches was used to measure the Harvard Bridge, which was found to be 364 and 4 tenths smoots long, give or take an ear. So they used Oliver Smoot as a benchmark. So how tall are you? You can measure a room of your home by using your height as a benchmark. You lay down with your feet by one wall and then mark your height somehow on the floor. Maybe one of your brothers or sisters could put a finger there or something or a book or a piece of paper to mark your height on the floor. And you repeatedly lay down and measure across the floor. We can also use a measuring tape or string to mark each distance of our height. My tutoring room is four Emma's long. Our next lesson, 12.2, we're going to use models to compare customary units of length. I hope you're having a good day, and I'll see you next time. Bye.